perfect adaptation. If they want to lock this in first, don't uh, give Nautilus, it's going to be an AD carry. It's probably going to be fooled. an AD. But, you know, uh, with the the <laughs> with the Callista and the Lucian band the way the Varus as well, you're kind of looking more or less, the only lane bully still up is something like a Draven. So they're happy potentially to go towards this Nautilus. And boom, the problem is already solved from game number one of being able to find immediate lockdown. And even if they have to suffer in the laning phase through a, a rougher uh, lane matchup, specifically, the mid game can look a little bit cleaner with that engage. And I feel like right here you have so many options because if they want to resort into playing Zeri, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. you've got the Nautilus to chase her around. If they want to resort into playing a Senna slash Tam Kent, but there's no Tam Kent or Nautilus slash any melee lane, you can just slam in something like the Draven and just play more aggressive, try to dive them yep. and set the Senna yep. behind uh, from the get-go. However, BLG right here, they're hinting that they're just scaling throughout this entire game. So I feel like top esports need to lock in some proactive picks to shut them down, like the Zinza, like something that can gank very early on together with a more aggressive bot on the map. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like, oh, the Vi got left open, actually. That so works. That was obviously the, the trade-up between these two drafts. So now, immediately, top esports, two forms are very, very reliable engage. Uh, I think they look uh, similar, with, right? Yeah, Nautilus are and Vi are. I know, they're, they're, they're functionally the same. Without Shun, maybe leaning on something like Jax on three, because it's banned away. I feel like they should have a pretty good time skirmishing and they're not going to go for an early aggressive pick like Draven, seemingly with this hover, looking to probably go handshake for handshake on the scaling with the Jinx. Again, all of these lane bullies banned out. Why even take the risk of going towards something like Draven when it can be a little bit coin flipping? Is there a point where you overhook a little too much when it comes to the engage? No. No, I don't think so. You as can long, never work with as, as, long, as, long, as long as you manage your tools Ooh. well, right? It's a communication thing before you get into a game. It's like, okay, you know, if I make what I'm saying to Tien, if I ult, don't immediately overstack the ult, right? Yeah. If we need it to actually take down the same target we're killing, awesome, chain CC them, but it's just about the comms that actually come into it beforehand. We spoke about Bin's tank play generally not being as strong as 369s. They're giving him the awn. So this is BLG saying, we want a full-blown scaling for now, and we're going to try and remove away perhaps 369's pressure point champions on the top side. Turn nameplates off and try to persuade me that the draft on the right is not a top esports draft. Because right here, BLG has turned a lot of our expectations oh, wow. upside down. Shun on a Maokai last game, and right now Bin on a tank in this particular game. I would love to see the reply coming in because things like the Twisted Fade are up for grabs right now. 4-3-6-9, he can pull out on them what oh. they did to him in Game 5. So a lot of the carry potential, Cream Sakali as well, getting knocked out with the, with the Azir in. Really, really important note here. Top Esports have banned away the Aatrox, so they're not sold that this Orn is going top. They Ooh, are actually considering this is Orn Senna bot lanes. And honestly, I don't mind it, right? Into Nautilus, into also potentially dealing with three-man bot lane dives. Orn is one of the be better tanks in the game at, you know, defensively, not just playing them out for himself, but also peeling, right, between the brittle autos and the actual knockup itself. He does a great job. So let's see if BLG uh, will opt into this. They're going to have the freedom to obviously go uh, Shun's jungler on four. So I'm actually quite surprised that Top Esports aren't banning away more junglers uh, with that in mind. Uh, they go towards this Sins out, and that's going to strip away an aggressive option. And we ask for, uh, you know, proactivity, I suppose, out of Cream in the mid lane that's been stripped away from BLG. I wonder what Shun is going to do here because he could always resort with something like the Kindred uh, yep. that he really likes, especially since you have like such a front to back, even more of a free scaling jungler. But you need a little bit spice because you've got bot lane farming, mid lane farming, top lane farming, and you need someone to get something going in that mid game. I love the Wukong right here. Uh, Again, it's if a double flex. If, if we're talking historical be, flexes, yep, right? It could I, if, be if I remember right. Lane. Mad Lions were <laughs> the ones that oh, were no. out in, in the major regions years and years ago, the Senna Wukong. Uh, and whilst it doesn't necessarily provide as much in terms of the early game defensive pill, I imagine this will probably be Shun's, so I'll talk about it like that for now, but it does kind of keep top esports potentially guessing as they move into 4-5. There's the Renekton like we spoke about. I was anticipating that, you know, potentially it would be uh, banned away by BLG, but they opted for those mid bands and Cream. Potentially just going to land on a, a Control Mage, seemingly. Go Control Mage, scaling for scaling. Orianna scales, fantastic, provides a lot of the utility. Quay is a lot more about this mid-game punch. A lot of people overestimate some of its scaling. It does a bunch of damage post two items, but certainly two item spike is where you'll see Huey do the most. Seven games this season for Cream as well. 100% win rate on the champion. Absurd amount of damage per minute. Almost 30% of his team's damage in every single game he's played. 
Rexa. that. Rexa's gonna get do, locked in, so... Do you know what's great about this? All three of those Kachalis can pair with Senna and go top or jungle with the exception of Orn. So I think this will be the final formation, but we'll have to see as the swaps will continue yeah. to come through. And historically in the previous series, Bin also played Rexa three times in yeah. a row, right? Yeah. But I really love the adaptation with the Orn towards the boss of the map. A lot of non-committal engage coming in from the side of BLG. And honestly, it's gonna be a team fight fest. Absolutely. And we're so looking forward to it as we're ready to head into the second game of the series, Top Esports against BLG with our casters, Nymera and Mazel. That's us. Welcome back, That's everyone. Us. That's us. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, we're actually here. Welcome back, everyone. We are here for game number two. Love to hear some of the different kind of stylized points that we are getting in the approach that game one offered us from Top Esports and BLG. But now, in game number two, BLG have drafted a top esports comp. And, and arguably, <laughs> you'd say the other side. Wait, didn't top esports draft a lot of what like, BLG have done as well? Like the mm. Jinx and the Nautilus two big picks that they've done as well shows the adaptation and the flexibility we have between these two teams. They know each other inside and out at this point. This is their seventh game play. Over Bin in his track record, and I think it's something that Bin definitely is chasing after. Absolutely, both these top players, top draw as we get ourselves into game two. Crowd alive and well. We get to it now again. Game number one, very quiet early. One of the latest games we've seen from these two teams going at it together. Looking for a little engage on, on early on. There is another point we want to talk about. This is the first time we've seen the Orn Senna from BLG. From them, yes. Uh, we have seen it elsewhere in the LPL, so it's not a surprising deal in the context of the region, but these two haven't played it themselves. Last game, we were talking about how Jack and Mako, they were undefeated on uh, the Santa lanes themselves, so they got themselves a first loss for that one. Um, it used to be kind of like a, a mark of dominance in earlier seasons of League, where you would take other people's picks and see if you could beat them with them after they've used it on them. Norlis getting a level one cooked, though, maybe changes things. On realizing he probably doesn't want to take the level one there against Mako, but I think this uh, Jinx. Nautilus bot side is going to play towards top esports strengths. So basically what happened there is on, it looks a little weird that he's standing around for the hook. He's trying to stop Vision being put down on the jungle start very early on. Something that we talked about last game actually is that Tian didn't path towards bot side in a very important early first clear. Um, and one of the reasons why top esports couldn't really end up getting the early jungle pressure they wanted is because Tian was spotted early into his clear. That's why On gave up his HP there, trying to stop the same happening for them. But now it means that On is in really not great amounts of HP. Yeah, he got a little bit of sustain from Elk. It's going to help out a lot. And Mako taking a ton of damage on the back end of it. Jackie Love just trying to clear this wave to get them level two here. We do end up seeing Tian going with some of that unique pathing we know him for. And this is great. So the thing is, Vi, not very good at fighting before level three, but with that Q, you can cross the wall at least. So it's going to be able to get themselves a very timely red buff steal. I think another hook. That's three out of three for Mako from what we've seen in the last couple. It's a big body, all right. It's yeah. you know, a little bit bigger of a target. That he is. Uh, Mako still, he's had such a history on this champion as well, that Nautilus. Um, with that ability to kind of like walk into the enemy jungle and make sure that they can kind of hold the bot lane to account means that there's no one really able to walk to Shen's defense, even if yeah. there were anything to happen towards that bot side on the first clear. Tien finds the Krogs as well. Should not going to actually see. Okay, now realizes that his uh, jungle is gone. Was spotted out okay. on the ward. So now the big thing is, uh, Shun has a couple of options, right? He can go towards the bot side scuttle. I think that's safe. We can see that Jack 11 and Mako, they're recalling right now, which means that if Shun goes into the enemy jungle and wanted to steal away a camp, there's a chance that Jack 11 and Mako come back with some extra combat stats. Ooh, he goes towards ooh, that. So instead he's he going towards got the around the ward there. What the hell? Kareem is not going to die to it, but should get in some mind games of his own. Oh, would have been lovely if he could have blown a flash. Can't quite do that. It's a shame, actually, because as we see now, it's going to be harder for him to walk into the bot side jungle. Tien's not really answering towards here now, though. You can see that Mako's here. Jackalove is walking into bot side jungle. Again, they had the resets that full HP. They have to summon us if they want to do something. And Mako is just sat there and like, yeah, I'll take the Raptors. Sure, why not? I'll take some cheeky nuggies. He's a hungry boy. Uh, <laughs> it, it's been really cool, though, for top esports. Uh, it's the first time they've had a true full-on veteran support in years, and it has looked insane between Jackie Love and Mako, but it's not only in lane, it's what Mako provides as a shot caller, as a leader to the rest of the map. Oh yeah, Mako is legendary. He's on the shortlist for best support player of all time. He's there, you yeah. know, and that, that's not an egotistical thing to say. This guy is incredibly powerful. Might see if he gets involved in this early side skirmish. BLG, they need to get something back for Shun, but this is dangerous now. Could go for the flash over wall, but gonna get that ward in. See that they're taking the red buff. They're gonna push them out so Tian can't get the smite steal. Oh, double knockup from Ah. 
Tian. That's huge, and now Tian, he has to go over the wall, the first blood to Shun, and TES are left tattered. Oh, and they lose the red buff, they lose their jungler's life after a great first clear or so. It felt like Tian had managed to shut out Shun from the game by stealing away so many camps, but they can't capitalize on it. And suddenly, Shun on the board, and that means that with particularly the bot side jungle being littered with wards now as well, Jack-11 and Mako are going to have to play with respect. The double knockup from on it lasts so long, and it's a, it's a setup, it's early damage, it's the Wukong that's providing that springboard. And, and like we were just talking about Mako in terms of his history <laughs> of a support. Now, On is a very young player, but he has a lot of seasons under his belt as well. See if it, it comes through here. On gets to go uh... into an uneven numbered fight. Knight's been trading well in the in mid lane. Jackie Love's not moving, and this is just disrespectful. It's greedy. You're going in for a steal, but it's just not able to match the numbers. That's an easy first blood. On has been incredible for this roster, taking a lot of time, it feels like, to make his name for himself. BLG will move from strength to strength, going from winning bot side fight to taking their grubbies. Now we see um, something we see quite, an oft uh, quite often as well. Once you have a couple of levels on your support with the with the Sano, see his chance again. <laughs> he does, it. He does, have does he flash. just give his life for him? Vault Breaker, okay, he's just going to flash over. He gets himself at least one. All right, okay. It's something you get. He wanted to watch the Telegrubbies, man. There's a good episode on today. It's Saturday morning that's, cartoons. That, that's my favorite. That's my favorite TV show. It's, it's educational. <laughs> League it's, of it's Legends exciting. Telegrubbies. It's everything. Ooh, nice. Doesn't that's a get, nice flash. Doesn't get the shove back quite back, but there is going to be that flash away all the same. So um, how do we recap all of what's happening here? We're starting to get plates going down to the bot side. It's a hook. That could be a kill. That is. It looks like it. They're going to try to carry back on a Mako. Nice double knockup. Jackie Love. He takes the extra tower shot, but they do get the kill, evening it up one to one. I have to say, so we were just talking about, oh, Tian, the mid lane. He's trying to find an angle here. Knight's going to burn his five. So Flash is just getting burned all over the place. It has cut side down. Elk. Elk. No way. He has no Flash. No way. One more auto attack, and Elk gets him right back. I guess, you know, uh, we're just freestyling it now. Is there structure to this? Presumably. No. <laughs> but is this kind of like all of this domino effect going back and forth? I think a lot of this stems back from the jungle invade where we saw that first blood go over. We've got an ult to stop the back, but is no. he going to get it? It's too late. I appreciate the thought. Doesn't stop it. Looks a little bit silly there. Jackie Love's like, oh, guys, I wasn't even there. <laughs> what do you want from me? But it is uh, some turret plates going back the way of BLG. They use that pressure from bot side to take this first drag. And maybe we'll start seeing a bit more structure come into it now. I think a lot of things were just reactionary after reaction, just taking the opportunities that they presented themselves, not necessarily fighting on important times, but looking to burn flashes and burn summoners and catch people out of position. This is after um, Orn had died under turret. Because he's died under turret, Jackie Love and Mako are really low HP from the turret shots, and they've been delayed. Elk gets kills, somehow, after this early game. It has been an experience, folks. I love it, but I'm sat here like, in no other game should this be happening in this kind of way. All the same, though, Elk picking up some gold for himself. It's nice, of course, with the, uh, the the fasting center. It really gets to a point where you're not necessarily getting all the gold in pockets. Some extra kills can help you pick up some items early. Able to get some souls under his belt as well. I think it's so huge to get any lead in bot side. Both of them having one kill apiece now. I do want to check in on the jungle path and right now. At least for the moment, it is opposite sides for both junglers. There's some presence down bot side for Shun. We'll be spotted out by the strike. That's important. Again, um, playing um, against heavy engaged comps without vision control. Um, League of Legends is no longer a strategy game. It becomes a horror game. It's ah, a horror survival okay, game. We okay. just sat there like, oh, is there going to be some monstrous, gribbly thing in the dark? Yes, there will be sometimes. Right, some... we need a horror game now. Please. That'll be so great. <laughs> I mean, what, do you remember the Fiddlesticks trailer? I that do. One? That was the most oh, terrifying so was cinematic so I've ever seen. There was uh, some, real, some really spooky stuff going on there. Anyway, you can, uh, someone can quote us on that later on. <laughs> that Not that it hasn't been suggested by anyone else, but still. I'm sure everyone who's uh, faced against a Rengar as well will know about that one. But still, BLG, they have themselves their ultimates. That's the big thing, right? We mm. joke about it, but if you do lose that vision control, you don't spot out the Scryer's blue there. If you're going to get engaged on, there's no flash left on Cream still. Knight could potentially shuffle him back, but with no Shun showing on the way, not going to be the case. Grub's up in just under a minute. Dragon up, not nearly on the same timer, so it means that we won't have ourselves these synchronized objectives. It means that maybe we can have some conflicts around them. Now, I love seeing Shun hover over Knight. Knight, a welcomed addition to BLG, replacing Yagao once again, but really providing that carry pressure from mid lane to bridge the gap to get bot lane in a place of, of good position. 
Yeah, you see that out also moving across the map as well. We briefly talked about this. Once you get a few levels on the, uh, the the support, the lane partner for the center, you're normally happy to leave them alone in the lane. Obviously, they died this time last time they tried <laughs> that, so it's not necessarily the best thing here, but that's the logic, right? But the center then goes across the map, uses the ability to just walk in as a ranged champion to get some tap damage, get some souls from other minion waves. And, uh, you can see how valuable that can be for kind of like controlling the top side of the map. Problem is, Jackie Love is getting a lot of gold from this, and there's a dive, so there's no other oh, help. Oh, yeah, On is just gonna walk out to his death. Tian gonna take that one easy peasy. Top Esau's honestly really well played for them to just say, look, you can move the center away. Yawn's gonna die. That's twice that's happened now. Once in a 2v1, once with a dive on bot side, and now suddenly Jackie Love getting a lot of gold, gonna get himself first turret as well, likely as well all the same. So yes, BLG, they're going to get themselves five grubs, but I really think with the Jinx coming online, and of course I think Jackie Love, one of the best AD carries the LPL has ever seen, and one of the very best in the last few years, uh, that, that's scary now for BLG. This game, despite the fact we talked about BLG being good in the early game, has another story left to it. We're going to take a look at mid lane though, but I do also want to talk a little bit more about the Adaptation from oh, BLG. Again. <laughs> oh, no. He will be spotted out there. He's going to try to use the Unstoppable, but he is locked down from the hell there. There's the Orn Horn. He's going to flash out, not use it. Does end up getting out with his dash. Huge stuff. He still ends up losing his flash oh. in his ult. Can 369 lift? He doesn't have Dominus. Anything you can do, we can do better. BLG execute the juggle and take even more on top side. So 369 is this time visited by uh, the roaming gank squad. And uh, BLG get themselves some gold. That's still, it's going to be first turret over the side of Jackalove. It's a lot of plates over the side of Jackalove. Honestly, I feel like in terms of the monetary value, it actually favors top esports in regards to this. However, they've given up objectives to do it. BLG will, give up, will get themselves a turret to even out that score. But they will uh, at least get themselves ahead in terms of the objectives, if not necessarily that nucleated gold on the scaling cap. So we have the scaling on uh, BLG's side, something a little bit different, where both these teams have been so predominantly early game based teams and finding snowballs. PS have a little bit of that different style, it feels like. Huey, obviously very strong late game, sustained damage carry from the Jinx, but the way that they approach this mid game is super important for them. Absolutely. I think that um, both these teams have very powerful engaged tools. You've got the Vi combo, you've got the Nautilus. Both of them can set up for the Huey because of the severing bolt and the huge damage which comes through from that. But on the other side, you've got three huge um, <laughs> kind of like beefy front lines. The, the, the Wukong can sometimes be a little bit squishy, but on the whole, you've got three carries with uh, three tanks with two long range carries behind them. So both of these teams can really look to front to back and look for big engages. And that's really what we're going to have to see and how that evolves. We are getting those first item spikes for pretty much everybody on this, uh, the carries at least. You're getting that static uh, shift started for Jackie Love. I think Mon is in trouble here. He has ghosts. Yeah. Look at him. Look how fast okay. he is. Come on. I was wrong. He's not in trouble. He has ghosts. <laughs> um, the spell book comes up fine. clutch. It does, because you're sat there like, oh, hang on. Uh, I didn't have as much XP as you. Both of them got cross map cross maps on a number of times, but you, know, you can see that um really is becoming a bit of a split map. A lot of vision being put down across the board as well. We can see that again, just trying to get these angles into sidelines. Tian trying to catch someone out, maybe catching oh, out. Oh, he does end up spotting him as he comes around the corner. Gonna look for the engage, but doesn't find the Vault Breaker there. Does have Mako and Jackie Love right behind him. On the other side of the map, Dragon is started by BLG. And there'll be a second Dragon in a row for them. It's been a really interesting few minutes seeing how these cross maps come about, the vision that comes down, the pick attempts that we've come through as well. Um, Top Esports in their last series, I thought they massively outclassed BLG in terms of their macro um, around this point in the game as well, yeah. going in towards in mid, -game, mid game a little bit more as well. This is kind of the start of the mid game now when you start flinging people at random lanes across the map rather than kind of going into the standard ones. But it feels like BLG, they haven't been as kind of thrown for a loop as they were the last time. Tien, this game has looked a lot more like what TS have, have had in the past, where he's looking for aggressive invades, things like that. But that has been a stark difference for me in this series than we saw from the last one is both teams are kind of willing to play the opposite side of the match, where in the last one, it was all about going to the same place and having big 3v3s, 5v5. And, you know, um, both these teams, a lot, they're happy to go towards the 3v3s and the 5v5s because they have incredible initiators and carries to, to leverage that. You know, every time I've seen top esports in a final setting, mo I mean, most of the times versus JDG, <laughs> <let's be honest. laughs> yeah, you know, like that huge matchup, it's not their old rivals in terms of that. Of course, BLG on the other side, they know that team mm. very well too. Um, it has been about those AD carry centric, backline, front to back kind of team fights. Uh, you know, just. A few finals ago, we had 9,000 damage team fights from both AD carries happening yep. at the same time. They're both uh, no strangers to that. Oh, just had a great one for that mech. Is he looking for a hook? Not quite just yet on. Using that Orn's tankiness and the W to just body block for his AD carry. The engages are not going to be quite as easy to land. Ooh. 
Shun is a little bit in between trouble, but uh, does it go finding with the help? Uh, 369, rather. Kring Ooh. flashes, gets the fear off. Donnie's shadow, and Shun gets the kill. Oh, my goodness. The dominoes are starting to fall for top esports. I mean, what do we say? Horror Survival League of Legends. You walk into the <laughs> dark, and you don't come back out. Cream blows the flash. Knight gets this mid lane, uh, this bot lane out of turret. This is when BLG tend to accelerate. As soon as you get these out of turrets down, it feels like BLG just become a different kind of beast. And yeah, it really does change the genre of the game. It feels like after that point, Shun 3 and 0 on this uh, Wukong as well. Really big moment for him. And I'm going to take my soapbox now. All this right, tell man me. Tell has me about been Shun. building up to this moment for so long. It is a potential for his first finals, but he has been able to take Tien to task and have these aggressive moments. And you know, Shun um, has been such a core piece of how this team plays, getting into the enemy jungle aggressively. We talked about Tien being a specialist. That Shun, absolutely the same thing as well. The Wukong Q skirmishing threat, basically hundreds to zero, the enemy mid laner. And you know, talking about Shun on a bigger level as well, I think BLG, they're a team which have tried to uh, kind of acquire success, bring in ex-world champions, bring out Uzi from retirement, but they have developed Shun themselves in part. And honestly, this guy has been excellent alongside the bot lane. BLG have been using that to really build something special for themselves over the last couple of years. It's been a really nice pickup from the IG developmental system. I know they're going to be missing him, but tough esports are uh, wishing he wasn't on BLG right now <laughs> as he's had an incredible start to this game so far. There's the Rift Herald pop by Tiana and driven into that turret for himself. We are going to collapse over to the spot side of the map now. It's, uh, it's going to be a mountain rift, and uh, Dragon's coming up in two minutes. You can't really afford to give over. Even just one mountain dragon is a bit risky to give over to an Ornn and a triple kind of beefy frontline from BLG. Mako caught up with a root. He has flash. He's going to have to blow it. No, he's out of vision right now, and he's safe. Mountain Soul makes it a little easier. Spider-Man gets a couple yeah. more uh, ledges true. to go on. Yeah. 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 It's like being in New York City. It's like um, a subject which I never really vibed with in school but love in League of Legends is geography. Okay. Sometimes I'm sat there like, yeah, this map changes the way you play the game. <laughs> it's fun stuff, that. Um, see, Tian. What's he? Ah, uh, Tian. Uh, he's all by himself. He does have the rest of the team coming. Okay, so Bin is going to tell TP into the fight here at least, and so is uh, Knight. They already take down Tian, though. He went so ham and went way too far. Jackie Love, he gets flashed off by Bin, and he has to flash his way out. Top Esports are left again in the dirt. I really don't understand the angle from Tien that you don't have your Renekton there in time. And honestly, the counter dive from BLG is so, so deadly. They fall down in a, what, three for one, and it's going to be a mid lane out of turret. It's probably going to be the setup for the Dragon going the way of BLG as well. This is a huge game-defining moment in game two. This is a red side that they have leads on. This is a team composition that if you're behind against them, you're going to have such a tough time in the later game, and Top Esports wanted to have the momentum. Yeah, I really want to see exactly what happened with the thought process from Top Esports. Maybe we can uh, find ourselves a replay of that. There's uh, no way he there. knew all three of them were <laughs> look, right look, he there. So he has himself the sweeper. They no. see, so they see two then. They see two. The thing is, even that you see all three, so they, they elect for this. They have full information for it. They do get on top of Elk, but it just feels like the team's way too far away. He's not there comping up the CC. And the double TP in immediately from BLG, you automatically add two big bodies in there. And a big Emperor's Divide pushes him right back into the Death's Maul of BLG. And particularly against champions like the Orn and the Wukong. Trying to get past that. can't do that. Get past their ultimates so hard. And now they've lost themselves the setup for the Dragon. It's coming up now. We don't have all the ultimates here from BLG, but they do have some gold to bring to bear. This is soul point for BLG on a Mountain Soul. Okay, we have ourselves Tremor Sense as well. We saw that from the Rex side. BLG playing with more information. And they play the fight out better, though. Green has to have a good angle. Tian waiting on the side in the tri bush. Dragon is started up by BLG and already about a quarter health down. 269 is going to move in. He's not looking for a flank. They're looking for a front to back here. Knight was trying to find an angle. He does have Emperor's Divide available. Hand shifting sands his way over the wall. Dragon getting so low. Here comes the Ornhorn, and the dragon was secured by 369. They actually find a big engage right back onto him, and Emperor's Divide comes out from Knight, and now it's just like fish in a barrel, and you just gotta aim down those shotgun iron sights and take them out one by little one. BLG move their knights into flanking position and put Top Esports in check. Cream, is he going to survive? No way. No, he is not just quiet. I think he's going to get chased down here. He's got here. the speed. Okay. okay. Oh, Shun's going the long con here. <laughs> he wants to take him out. He wants to so Cream that this may be his first finals, but he will not come away a victor yet. 
as he is all alone under tower he's gonna try to get the back off but soon is there the fear coming out though and the rest of the team is there to knock him down blg they win so many of these fights back to back now they lose the dragon somehow to the renekton in that <laughs> but still it's a huge victory for them you can see how hard it is for top esports to reach the carries that they really want to. We'll go into a replay of this and show us exactly what you mean. Now, Knight is just constantly threatening the back. Like, it doesn't matter that he's on vision. It doesn't change anything. The fight wow. that three, six, Gets that dragon. We'll just gloss over that briefly. Big moment. <laughs> I mean, it's a big moment. It stops that, uh, um, that objective going over. Ah, that's really important. Knight actually ends up using Jackalove's W animation. He self cc would yep. himself, standing still for the zap. That's his prime target for that sweep back. And you know, Knight, um, his, uh, his Azir has often been criticized rightfully, oh, so. rightfully so but this one i really think um has shown itself as a really good team fighting tool here and with shun having so much damage on the wukong you're not necessarily missing it if the azir dies early the fact that blg have taken what top esports tried to approach them with in game number one and absolutely decimating them with it it's not a close game it is fully in advantage for blg here almost six thousand plus in the lead how do you come back from that decision-making for top esports? It's really hard now. Um, we talked about BLG as a team, very, very good at holding on to a gold lead. They have a huge gold lead now. I think they still have their 100% win rate with a lead at 15 minutes. It's an absurd stat coming through from, a, a, you know, a team which has evolved to play on the same page. I think 2023, yeah. midway through spring, the, the core of this roster was here, obviously, it was, in, it was Yugao instead of Knight, but Tabe came in to develop this team from a team that would go one and one every week to one that was actually genuinely willing beating they got themselves to an MSI finals and now they get themselves onto the Baron and force top esports to them back to back record breaking splits for BLG this is second finals for the organization now here comes the re-engage from the Ornhorn Baron getting a little low can Tian get in the pit he does not it is secured by Elk of all people and a mad Elk has just come to play they get the dawning shadow across the Emperor's Divide TS are stuck at the wall and they can't do anything about it Ben has found the angles, and TS are left with nothing. Oh, man, what is it with other people securing the objectives? It doesn't matter, though. BLG, they would have forced Top Esports into a bad fight all the same. They get the objective, they get themselves the kills. They're going to start once again just turning the screws. And Top Esports, they gave them a good fight in that last time around, but BLG are not playing games here. They've just jumped up another 2K. They have a huge Baron buff to continue to push with. They're going to TP in on the front side. Oh, Knight gets feared. He's still under turret here. Okay, finally gets out from under there. Has been with that TP, makes the difference. They do end up getting it with Elk's range. Oh my god, they're just between the turrets here, Nymera. This is unfair. There is no safe place for top esports. They continually dove, and BLG are showing no mercy. Teleport onto the minion. Keep teleporting, keep going. That carousel does not stop turning and the death keeps coming one by one. Elk finds another one and the inhib turret now in the eyes of BLG. And this game has just gone from zero to 100 so, so quickly. A couple of fights back to back and BLG have just not looked back. Top Esports, I think a lot of people were expecting them to go the distance here against BLG. They might have to do it from zero to down. A couple minutes and another couple thousand gold. It's going to continue piling on over 10,000 now, moving up to 12,000 gold. BLG, lasting damage done to Top Esports base. And now Top Esports trying to get one more fight, but I don't think it's a fight you wanted. Mako's already gone, and the rest of Top Esports are left with everything to defend as they have a nice little angle. Oh my god, Knight with a huge Emperor's Divide. And that's 369 just watching as his base crumbles there was so much trash talk between these teams top esports wanting to take this one holistically but blg they rear their beastly head and they'll move up to match point blg in only their second finals ever as an organization are really coming to play they've never been favorites before this team has uh, you know dealt with their jdg curse they're not here to stop them this time top esports we thought they could contend with them maybe bring them the distance the first two games yeah the first one was close this one wasn't blg they have gone from being a good team in the lpl to genuinely being elite and uh, I'm a big reader of body language. Uh, you can see massive difference between the two teams. Tian knows that that game was on him. I think there's a lot of situations that it, it didn't go his way. Smiles, laughter, momentum to BLG. I think it's important to see if top esports can bounce back. We're going to send it to a break, and we'll be on the other side with our analyst.